Hi guys, it is Aoife from Fred Weezy Diet Laughing and I am here with a series review today. So I am going to be doing a series review on the Dove Lynn series which is a crack in everything, um, a hollow in the hills and a darkness at the end, all of them by Ruth Francis Long. And this is an Irish author and it was, it's also published by an Irish publishing company. So obviously for me that is great. I'm so happy to be able to support both Irish authors, Irish public, publishing companies and books set in Ireland and are about Irish mythology and Irish fae and just loads of Irish goodness. So the basic premise of this series starts obviously with a crack in everything and it is about a girl called Izzy Gregory. She is a normal kind of 16 year old girl just going about her life and one day she is going through town and she notices this kind of graffitied image of an angel in an alleyway and she's just really drawn to this image for some reason so she goes over and she kind of ends up stumbling into like another kind of world I guess or like an alternate version of Dublin and basically she touches this angel and a kind of something happens and the angel's spark goes inside of Izzy and it turns out that angels are real, fairies are real, goblins, leprechauns, banshees, you name it, they're all real and they are living in this other side of Dublin, this kind of secret side that normal humans can't see and they call it Dublin, hence why this series is called the Dublin series. So Izzy ends up kind of partnering, partnering up with this fae um, guy called Jinx and he ends up trying to help her and she ends up being in a lot of danger because of this angel spark inside of her, a lot of people are after her because an angel spark can give great power so it's kind of like this really great draw to a lot of other powerful fae lords and fae matriarchs is what they call them, kind of the leaders of the different kinds of fae. And he ends up trying to save her. She ends up discovering a lot to do with herself in the fae world and she ends up finding out that she's her family, she and her family have a lot more to do with the world of the fae than she originally thought. Um, so she ends up kind of rediscovering herself. She finds like this completely crazy kind of uh, Dublin. Her father is has been in an accident so while this is all going on she also needs to try and figure out a way to help wake him up because he's in a coma. Um, so she just has like a lot of things going on. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed all of these series, all, sorry, all, all of these books in the series. I love that it's just really genuinely written by an Irish person, like a lot of the sayings and the phrases and just how people speak naturally are very much how I would speak to my friends and how my family, we would all speak to each other. Just different kind of things, how we kind of tease each other, just kind of a relaxed kind of way of talking. There's nothing stiff. One of the things I hate about books is when the dialogue seems really stiff and forced and it definitely doesn't in any of these books. It's all very, very natural. Um, I guess it's the gift of the gab really with the Irish probably, but um, yeah, it's just really nice. It flows really, really well. Everything is very descriptive and really detailed. And you can tell that Ruth took a really, like, you know, that she really looked into all these places, that she has all, like, these different landmarks and these, diff these different kind of histories taken from different landmarks and stuff like that. And she's really looked into them and she's really kind of gone to these places. And I did go to the book launch for the last book, which is The Darkness at the End. And she did talk about how she does go and walks with her family to these different places that she has in her books because she needs to make sure that she's describing them correctly and if you know if, if if there's something there in this specific area she wants to make sure that it's really there or she can incorporate it in some way. This is told in a very truthful way with about Dublin and Ireland because it's not centered around the touristy areas that like anyone who probably hasn't even been to Ireland who might have only been in Ireland for a few days and just gone to Temple Bar which is like the tourist district you know it's it's not set around there it's set around no where normal Dublin people and normal normal you know people just living around Dublin would go like Grafton Street and O'Connell Street and places like that and places where um you know like people go to to listen to music and go to clubs and stuff it's it, it's the real Dublin it's the real side of Dublin it's the side that I would go and it's the side my friends would go and I know all the places I know all the places that she's talking about and I just really really loved that because you know normally I'm reading books about like when all this kind of supernatural activity and they're set in like New York or somewhere different or normally in New York to be honest and I don't know New York I don't know the places in New York so you know it's just not that like special for me so where this one is obviously talking about places I know so it's just that little bit more special for me. I really love all the relationships that form in these books and um, they're just really really great they're very they're very real nothing is rushed and um, I just felt like 
obviously the relationship that Izzy formed with one of the characters where it turns into romance it was so real and throughout all the books like they're not this lovey dovey couple they're not falling all over each other and finding any spare moment in inappropriate moments like you know halfway through where they're being chased to death or something like that they're not going to stop and have some smoochy kiss they're kind of always kind of saving each other's lives and um, so their whole relationship is really really intense and they never really have a chance to just breathe and kind of just be them but at the same time you know their feelings for each other are really really genuine and are really great so I really loved that. I really enjoyed Izzy's relationship with their parents as well because particularly in the first book her relationship is really good with them and um, they're very kind of honest with each well mostly honest with each other they're kind of they talk to each other really well they slag each other her parents have a great relationship with each other and then as things move on and we go into like the second book which is a hollow in the hills and some truths have come out Izzy's obviously trying to deal with a lot of changes in her life and you do see that shift change like a change in her relationship with her parents and it's so real and um, because that would actually happen like nothing can stay the same forever nothing can stay perfect and you see her struggling to kind of still be the same Izzy with her parents um now that she knows this darker side of Dublin this darker side of the world where terrible things can happen and there are terrible creatures waiting both these books are filled with really really great characters and um, both human but also fae characters obviously we have kind of um, the coo which are kind of fairies that can turn into wolf like creatures we have normal fairies we have fairies who are particularly gifted with music um, we have leprechauns there are kind of big monstrous kind of fairies um, there are banshees obviously um, and then there's also in a hollow in the hills there is the um, farshi which is actually the male version of a banshee I just thought that that was so good because I've never heard of anything like that and obviously if there's a banshee there's going to be a farshi like that just makes so much sense to me um because ban in Irish is actually woman so farshi is obviously the main male version um and yeah so it was just really great and it's really scary as well like, they, like these aren't books that are like really light they're they're really dark and they're really intense and you know people die in them a lot of characters do do don't make it to the end and you're kind of at that edge where you're always kind of scared for your favorite character and like I kind of love that feeling though with books because it really grips you so it makes you really want to keep turning those pages to the end even if just in hope that your favorite character will survive till the end so that's what I definitely did with this book with all of the books not just this one but all of them especially the end which is a darkness at the end for this one I was just like I was I was at Ruth's lunch and I think I was about like I don't have this this much left and all I wanted to do was just continue to read it because I just couldn't couldn't wait I just had to finish it and I think I finished it at the end of the night when I got on the bus home I, I finished most of it and then I, I think I finished off like the last two chapters when I got home but um yeah it was just absolutely brilliant I really liked the conclusion to this um it was I think kind of just everything that I needed Um, it wasn't too far-fetched it wasn't like everything went happily ever after like all this bad stuff happened and then a rainbow came and fixed everything like nothing not everything is going to be fixed but at the same time it was all done in this really great way it wrapped up really nicely in a really nice bow but there are definitely there are definitely kind of some things that happened where I could see a spin-off happening or with specific characters and with, with specific details that came out in the open that we never even knew about until kind of the second half of this book. There were some things that were revealed about some of the characters that were just like really, really great. I really loved them, but it means I'd love to know more. I'd almost love like a prequel series, um, hint, hint, Ruth. Um, but yeah, I would love some sort of spin-off or some sort of prequel series because I think there's still so much there's just still so much to be explored I think with this series and with the characters I think you could do so much with it because Ruth has created this really really fantastical mystical world that you can just dive into and just lose yourself in now in saying that I definitely would not like Dublin to actually exist because it's really really scary and the humans don't come out so well with this and with the angels coming down and not caring about them or anything like that so yeah I don't think I like Dublin to actually exist but I would definitely love more stories. So as you can tell I gave the series a 5 out of 5 stars as a whole and um, I just really enjoyed every moment of all of them. Um, I found the second book I think in particular Hollow in the Hills the easiest to jump right into and really get in with the story because with the crack and everything you know you're kind of getting your head around what Dublin is what the kind of fairies there are that kind of stuff you just need that little bit of time to really get into the story where with the Hollow in the 
hills you obviously already have that in your head so you can get into the story really really quickly and the villain in particular in hollow in the hills is really really good and um, i really enjoyed that um so yeah it is the kind of dark mystical intense fairy that you need they are not the happy-go-lucky ones that we see in fairy tales these are the kind of fairies of nightmares i guess the fairies of halloween but yes if i could if i could describe this series in any way i kind of describe it as a storm it's kind of like drizzly and gray and stormy and then there's these like flashes of like thunder and lightning where it's like really really intense and everything kind of happens at once and then it kind of slows down a little bit but everything doesn't get better straight away and um, so that's the kind of best way I can describe this and um, but it's really really great please go and check these out get them on kindle they're available on amazon as far as I know um, and I will leave all the links and stuff to them below if anyone is interested in getting them I did get these books uh, for free by the publishers in exchange for an honest review but you guys know that I won't say I like the books if I don't like them. I truly did enjoy all of these books. They're just absolutely brilliant. I'm really glad because I had no idea the series existed until they were sent to me. So I'm really, really glad that they were sent to me. So now I know they do exist and I know about uh, Ruth's writing because her writing is just so great. So yes, definitely go check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please comment any thoughts you have below or like the video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.